Hi everybody, I'm back. Second video of the day. This is part two from the video I did earlier. It's an update on last or my last video. Again, there is a trigger warning on this video because much of what I'm gonna talk about might be very disturbing to many people. So again, if if this kind of thing bothers you, please just click off of this one and watch another video some other time. I am will be back to Scientology and breast cancer and Timu as soon as possible, I promise. And again, if I laugh, it's out of nerves or disgust. So um, I don't find any anything at all about this situation funny. So anyway, we are going to get started. Hi, I'm glad to see a couple of you have already come in. Again, I'm gonna, I was, I actually got um, access to the arrest warrants for the four individuals that were arrested in the murder of the two women in Oklahoma. And I am um, I'm not going to show them just because they are so long. They're like, there's four of them. They're pretty much exactly the same. And they're like eight pages long. And there's a lot of stuff that's redacted and it's just a mess. So I do have them, but I am just going to quote some of the high, po high points. Otherwise, this video will be three hours long. And I really don't want it to be that long. There was also... Um, a statement with it. So I'm going to kind of talk about it for a minute before I get into part of the arrest warrant. So it's said that Adams, being the uh, Tiffany Adams, the grandmother, called the woman that she was to pay to supervise the visit with Veronica and the children and said not to come, that it had been canceled. Now, apparently both parties, Veronica and this Tiffany Adams, were required by the courts to actually pay someone to attend the, you know, pick up and drop off. And, and um, of course, um, Veronica would have somebody there for the visit. So, but... The grandma called her person and said, oh, it's been canceled, so don't worry about coming. And uh, so anyway, there's that. But Veronica still had her person coming. Okay. When questioned, Adams told OSBI that Veronica had canceled the visit, which was a lie, and that in fact, and, in fact, Adams had spoke to Veronica approximately 15 minutes before the scheduled visit, making her the last person to speak to the women. So, not only did she lie to the OSBI and say that Veronica canceled the visit, but then they kind of found her out because her cell phone told that she had been the last person to speak to her. And that Veronica was already at the pickup location. Apparently, the children had actually spent the night at some people named Barrett and Lacey Cook's home, and Adams picked them up two hours after the scheduled meetup, which is when she was scheduled to pick them up. So she already knew she wasn't going to pick them up and take them to, the, to, her, to their mom. So all this is just kind of adding up a little bit. And... Ver Veronica apparently knew that the kids were at the cook's house, but was told that Adams would be picking them up or had already picked them up and was um, taking them to the meetup. So there's all that. <laughs> I guess Adam, I guess uh, Veronica's husband told them that, you know, she knew that the kids had spent the night at the cook's house and that, but that they were supposed to be being picked up and taken to her. So, Okay. 
anyway, I got information from the arrest warrants that tell how the four, and it looks like at least one more person were involved. This is as of today, that four arrests have been made in the murders of Veronica Butler and Julian Kelly in Texas County, Oklahoma. And like I said, if you haven't seen my first video on this, go watch it and then come back to this one because the first one will kind of, this one kind of picks up where the other one left off. Okay, so Rang, I'm gonna read a bunch of this because I won't, don't want to mess it up, y'all. Wrangler Rickman, who is the, Wrangler Rickman's grandma. Wrangler is the father of Veronica's children. But his grandma, Debbie Knox Davis, reported that in late February of 2024, Rickman told her they wouldn't have to worry about the custody battle very much longer, that his mother, Tiffany Adams, had it all under control, that his mother had it all under control. Yeah. He said that Adams knew the path the judge walked to work and that she will take care of Veronica or I'm sorry, she will take out Veronica at drop off. Now that's what Rickman's grandmother said. And I don't know if that is this um, Tiffany's mom or if it's Rickman's or if it's um, Wrangler's dad's mom. But anyway, it's his grandma kind of hard to follow y'all but okay on april 1st two days after the disappearance osbi agents obtained a search warrant for adam's cell phone and performed an extraction and gained access to searches for taser pain level gun shops prepaid cell phones and how to get someone out of their home on april 3rd 2024 osbi B.I. interviewed C.W., age 16. C.W. is the daughter of Cora Twobley and Kobe Wright, or White, I'm sorry. Cora is married to Cole Twobley, and they are both charged in the murder. C.W. said she had heard group conversations about Butler not protecting her children from the brother from her brother in reference to SA allegations. CW advised that she was told by Cora that Adams, Colum, Cora, Cole, and someone that we've not heard of yet named Paul Grice were involved in the deaths of Butler and Kelly. She said Adams provided burner phones so they could communicate without using their personal devices. And she said that she did see two burner phones hooked up to chargers in her mom's bedroom on the nightstand. Can you imagine this poor girl? She's 16 and she's having to tell that her mom is involved in a murder. <laughs> it just gets more and more horrific, guys. I mean... <sighs> C.W. described Adams, Colum, Cora, Cole, and again, this Paul Grice, which I still don't know who this is, and I've looked, and I'm going to keep looking, as part of an anti-government group with religious affiliation. Through, through OSBI investigation, it was learned they call themselves God's Misfits. They have regular meetings every week at, Bar at Barrett and Lacey Cook's home. These would be the people that the children had spent the night with. So, makes you kind of wonder about these people too a little bit. And I mean, they may be completely innocent, but that's, you know, someone else I'm kind of going to be looking up. CW was told Cole and Cora would not be home the morning of March 30th when she woke up that they were going on a mission. She said, quote, mission. CW says that she woke approximately 10 a.m. and they weren't there, but that they arrived at approximately noon. 
CW knew that they had taken both a blue and gray Chevy pickup owned by them and a blue flatbed truck owned by Clint Tombley. They returned in the same two vehicles. CW was then asked to go and clean the interior of the Chevy pickup. She asked Cora what happened and was told things didn't go as planned, but they didn't have to worry about Butler, which is Veronica, again. They would never have to worry about her again. CW was told Cora and Cole blocked the road to stop Butler and Kelly and divert them to where Adams and Colum and Grice were. CW asked why Kelly had to die and was told she wasn't innocent, that she supported Butler. So, I mean, I mean, I'm kind of figuring, you know, leave no witnesses kind of a thing. But, you know, she's just doing her job. CW asked if the bodies were put in a well and was told something like that. CW also disclosed that other attempts to kill Butler in February of 2024 near Hugoton, Kansas, when Adams, Colum, Cole, Cora, and Grice, again, this Grice person, where is he and who is he, went to Hugoton, but Butler didn't leave her residence. This was consistent with searches on how to get someone out of their house. According to Cora, the plan was to throw an anvil through Butler's windshield while driving, making it look like an accident because anvils regularly fall off of work vehicles. So while um, CW was in Kendrick, Texas, interviewing, basically in protective custody, both she and her brother were there. Cora and Cole arrived trying to get access to CW and her brother. And when they wouldn't let her have access to them. They said that Cora was very verbally aggressive and um, upset that the police wouldn't let her, wouldn't grant her access to her children. And that Cole exited the vehicle with a handgun in his holster on his belt. <laughs> OSBI investigation shows that Adams searched gun shops on her cell phone a search of local shops showed her buy five stun guns at the Big R store in Guyman, Oklahoma on March 23rd, 2024. She purchased three prepaid cell phones from Walmart in Guyman February 13th. This shows a lot of premeditation. And the arrest warrant does list the three cell phone numbers, but I didn't list those. I mean... Search warrants for these, for info on these numbers was obtained and, throw, and show three phones were in the area where Butler's car was located and the last known location of the women before they disappeared at about the time that they disappeared. All three were powered up and access cell network for the first time near Colum's residence prior to March 30th. On March 30th, the phones were near Twombly's residence, and then they went to Colum's residence before going on to where the car was discovered. After March 30th of 2004, it was determined that three phones were at a property owned by Jamie Beasley, which lived, but the property was below a dam in the area, and that there was fresh dirt work located there. Concrete had been moved from a location near Beasley's residence, approximately 150 to 200 yards below the dam, where it was discovered in a hole or a hole had been dug and filled back in and then covered with hay. This was approximately eight and a half miles from where the women disappeared. The property was easily in drive time of the 34 minutes after the women's phones stopped transmitting 
and the burner phones were detected at Beasley's property. Beasley advised OSBI that the dirt work was done by a skid steer by Colum on March 29th and that he had finished on March 30th at approximately noon. He said that when he got up at noon that the skid steer was gone so he knew that it, the work was done before noon. Colum rents the pasture owned by Beasley for cattle grazing and has access to it at all times. On March 28th or 29th, Beasley wasn't sure on the date, Colum asked him if he could cut down a tree out in the pasture, dig up the stump and bury some concrete and then do the dirt work, you know, to cover it up. And uh, that this was, this was all to be done down below the dam. Beasley said that Adams, the grandmother, was with Colum when the conversation happened and Beasley learned from Colum that Adams was his significant other. Beasley agreed to let Colum do the work, but he did stress that Colum brought up doing the work to Beasley, that he wasn't hired to do the job. I'm almost done. <laughs> On Saturday, March 31st, in the morning hours, Colum was at Beasley's house and told him that people were looking at him for the disappearance of Butler and Kelly. Colum said he didn't want the police to cause trouble for Beasley because of all the tracks from the skid steer and there not being a skid steer, skid steer sorry, on the property still that it would look really bad for Beasley. Probably look really bad for him too. But it sounds to me like a little bit of a, you know, blackmail kind of situation. Beasley said that if asked, he'd say that he hired Colum to do the work. So, um, from everything I've learned, it sounds as if these women may have been buried in concrete or under concrete, something to do with concrete in the hole where a tree was um, on this Beasley's land by Colum and whoever, I mean, and Adams and the Twombly's and Grice, whoever he is. I'm still looking up to find out who he is. I'm sure that it'll come out in the next few days. Um, all four of the arrest warrants read the same way. After this, they just told what the counts were, which is two counts of first degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and then conspiracy to commit first degree murder. So that's, all I have now, but it is all coming together and it's all getting weirder and weirder and weirder. And it ties back more and more and more to this religious, political cult. Um, it just looks like there's an awful lot of people that, that might be involved or have known about it. I think that four or five people for sure need to have their butts in prison and maybe some others that are going to have some accountability somewhere. I'm not really sure what. So I'm going to check in with the chat and see what we're up to. <laughs> y'all should have seen me a while ago, y'all. I set the time for this live to start and I set it faster than what I realized I set it for. And then I realized like, oh my God, I like, I mean, I had went to the restroom. I had put dinner in the oven. I had, you know, done all this stuff and I figured out I had only had 10 minutes to, to do it. So, you know, Tom Cruise in that movie where he slides across the room in his, like, shirt and his socks. I look like that sliding across this bench on my butt, y'all. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, I came in right as, I mean, I had just a few seconds before it was time for the live to start. So next time I'm going to pay a little more attention, which I guess, you know, if I was a few seconds late, it wouldn't have mattered. But I don't like to be late. So anyway, I'm going to check this chat. So, 
Dawn Glove says, hi, Susie. Hola, Susie from Cuba. It's good to see you. Cuba's a long ways. Well, not really. I mean, compared to some, it's not, but it feels like it. I'd kind of like to go to Cuba sometime. I have a friend that went there. He's passed away now, but he, he had been there. He thought it was gorgeous. Don Glove says this story is horrible and it gets worse by the minute. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I don't know. After this, I might just have to like step away for the night and just come back tomorrow and see what happens. Cause I just, I was just shocked when I got access. Somebody got me access to the arrest warrants and I didn't have to go to Texas County to get them. Someone else did. <laughs> so Angel4967 says, hello, Susie. Yes, the grandma is pure evil. I, they all are, but I'm sorry, that grandma. I cannot get over the evil that has to be in her heart and to think. Like I looked at her, at her Facebook, y'all, and it's all these religious quotes and scripture quotes and all that. And I'm like, and yet. You are this monster, this absolute monster. Whether she pulled the trigger or what she planned it, no matter what, she's planned it. But whether she pulled the trigger or not, I don't care. She's a monster. And somebody that is that big of a control freak, she probably did pull the trigger. And for that kind of blood, I mean, there were puddles, y'all. Puddles. I don't think that they let those women lay there on the road long enough to let puddles form. So I think it had to have been multiple shots or a very large caliber weapon. That's just my thought. And I may get proven wrong, but logic tells me that they did not plan all this and then let those women lay there and bleed out that they you know I don't know it, it is absolutely horrible I just I cannot imagine sovereign citizens and religion no wonder yeah no wonder they rolled up like they were ready for Waco all over again it did look like that there was like 20 vehicles armored vehicles I mean, and honestly, they didn't know how many people were going to be there. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, people can say, oh, there was one at this one and three at that one. But they didn't know that. This is a basically a militia, a cult, you know, all this stuff rolled up into one. And we're sitting on large farms, compounds even. And, you know, you don't know if there's going to be one person or 200 people there. Of course, 200 would be the whole town because there's only 270 something people in the town. But whenever you're talking about all the outskirts, I mean, that's just of the town. There's probably that many people or more on, you know, scattered around in the outskirts. And it just, oh my gosh. I mean, like the little town that we live in, which we don't live in it, but I mean, it's a small little town. But there's more people out here in the country that have that same address than there are in that town. And, of course, we're a lot closer together than what these people are. I've been, I don't know about that exact area. It was Oklahoma Highway 95, I believe. Um, they said it's a cut through for trucks that are trying to avoid the scales and stuff like semis that are trying to avoid the scales and stuff on the interstates and everything. So there's a lot of illegal activity just in general that goes on there. And I don't know that I've actually been down that road. I'd have to ask, ask my ex-husband how we traveled when we went there. But, because um, I can't remember. It's been 30 years ago. But I just remember how desolate it was and it was scary. It just, it just seemed like that if you needed help, you were going to be S-O-L for a long time. And hopefully nobody bad came up on you while you were sitting there needing help. Because it just, it, it just terrified me. I was just glad to get away from there. Yes, Oklahoma does have the death penalty. 
and um, it did say on the arrest warrants that that this was punishable by death. Now the um, I think the kidnapping might be too. Don't hold me to that one, but I know that of course the murder was. I think the kidnapping was too. I think because it was done in connection with a murder, um, and the conspiracy was like 20 years, I think. But if they get them on conspiracy, they're going to get them on the rest. And so Oklahoma likes to toss out that, that death penalty. So I imagine on something like this, mischief managed. Oh my God, I finally caught you live again. Yeah. And it's something like this. I'm sorry. I'm going to get back to our normally scheduled programming. <laughs> But I just had to do this. It's in Oklahoma, where I'm from, and it involves a cult. So I thought it really does kind of fit with my, you know, normal programming because I talk about my life here in Oklahoma and cults, one cult generally. And this one, thank God, wasn't Scientology because I'm just glad there's not any Scientologists here. But this one apparently is worse, just tiny. God's misfits. And if you look it up, they're all over the place. They're even they're in New Mexico where this guy actually owns more property. This Colum guy owns property in New Mexico. There's a branch of it there. There's branches all over the country. They're just little. And they are a religious extreme, you know, extreme religious cult slash extreme um right wing political views. So, I don't know. Like I said earlier, I know that there's extremes on both sides of the political aisle, and I don't think that the majority of us would ever fit into either of those extremes, but it was, it apparently is important to note that they are in a religious and political cult. So, inappropriate heifer catching up but 2x well it wasn't very long so you ought to be able to catch up pretty fast lots of people saying hi to each other boy cults just keep getting better and better this is horrid tell me about it isn't it awful you know they said that they that this group of people not just these four, but this whole group, but this family in particular just kept people living in fear. People in that town just kept them, it just kept them living in fear. And I'm just like, <laughs> what the hell? You know, and how can the grandmother have said things like that, you know, bodies were going to start hitting the ground and stuff, like I said earlier? And the judge not have put her ass in jail. I mean, it makes me wonder. I don't think that the, that judge necessarily was in her pocket because she's threatening to kill him too. That's probably why he's under 24-hour security because there's still a whole bunch of them left. And, and this one that we don't know who he is. I mean, but how could she be saying all this stuff and not be in trouble? It makes me think that she's got police protection somehow. And I'm sorry, but a lot of the police we see in L.A. how crooked a lot of the police can be. And I'm telling you, in Oklahoma, there's a lot of them that are very extreme right wing. I'm not talking about just because they're Republicans or they're Trump supporters. I'm talking about extreme right wing. I mean, we've got, I've got people right down the road from me that are extreme and it it's not fun it's it's worrisome yeah wackadoodles on both sides of the political yes political aisle absolutely absolutely that's my word too i always call them wackadoodles <laughs> so and i don't think that the majority of 
people are that way. I, I honestly think that there's this side over here and this side over here and they're like little sides, you know, and then there's this big group in the middle. That's everybody else, regardless of what your political or religious beliefs are. Cause I mean, this is a religious cult too. It's political and religious. So I'm just like, Oh my God, it's just insane. I cannot imagine the terror these two women were feeling. Can you imagine they get like hemmed in between two trucks and basically forced to a secondary location. And they said that that uh, Julian carried a gun, but I mean, we're talking about at least five people. And I mean, I don't think it'd be hard to overtake her, you know, or, or just she'd be, I might be so shocked I wouldn't even know what to do like you know you train and everything to use your gun but in a situation like that would you be like if you didn't have it in your hand at the moment you know if I had it in my hand but if it was like in my bag my bag sitting in the floorboard or in the back seat or whatever I don't know that I you know you're chit-chatting listening to the radio whatever you know I don't know that I would necessarily in an instant think to I hope I would, but, you know, they did find um, a broken hammer there uh, on the scene, and they found a cartridge from a handgun, but or a pistol, they said, but no pistol. So I'm not sure about that stuff yet. That hasn't been released, what any of that was. Yeah, Mischief Manish is right. <laughs> I'm not f familiar with this case, but I am for sure going to check out the previous post. Creepy. Yes, do. Um, yeah, I, I broke it down from start to finish or from start to here in my last video. And I really thought it would be a couple of days before I would have any update on it. And maybe just a quick little deal on my community page. But this broke whenever, I mean, I was surprised to get this information. So <laughs> thank you to the uh, person that got that to me. And also on my community page, I listed, if anybody is interested in it, there are um, legitimate um, GoFundMe pages for both of the women's families. So if anybody wants to help that way, I'm sure they would appreciate it. If not, totally understand. I, you know, I just put them there on the community page in case anybody wanted to do that. And uh, so that's there. But check out down the rabbit hole as well. Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of the true crime people that are doing it. I, um, I sat there last night, way into the night. And when once I decided to do the video and just tried, you should see the pile of paper that I would write stuff in scribble it out and do this and, you know, change it and everything. I was trying to get like an absolute timeline on it because it was so confusing. There were just so many, um, you know, police press conferences and stuff and, and um, bloggers and just, you know, everything, vloggers, all that, that were giving out information. And so trying to chase down what was right and what was wrong and get some kind of a timeline on it was was insane, but I finally tried to get it. And like I said, I don't know that everything I said is an absolute fact. There's more coming out all the time. I mean, just like there's another person that I don't know who he is and if they're looking for him or if they've questioned him, I don't know. Um, I will be watching for that. Um, I certainly didn't know that the grand that the, the father of the children's grandmother had had information. And I had also said in the last video that I really hoped that the father didn't know about it, but it kind of sounds like he did whenever he says that, that the mom would take out Veronica at pickup that pretty much puts him right in it too. So I expect charges to be on him. Um, you know, I don't know about the grandma. I mean, if she knew about it and didn't say anything, or if they would say she's old and scared or I don't know. Now, the 
the dad of the kids, he says he didn't have that conversation with the grandma. But I'm not going to believe anything he says right now. So, and I feel so sorry for this 16-year-old that had to to tell on her mom. I mean, bless her heart. I mean, I hope they keep her safe. Because if not, she could really be in some danger too. Denise Hansen says, hi, Susie. Just wanted to say hello. I missed your first live earlier, so I'm going to go and watch it now. I will have to catch up on this one. Yeah. You're looking great. As usual, love you. I love you too. And thank you. I've, I've really been trying to like make myself get up every day, get dressed, maybe put on a little bit of makeup, actually comb my hair. <laughs> because I know that once I get back on that chemo next month, but <sighs> y'all might see a whole other Susie then. I'll probably be gray looking and my hair you know might be a mess i might have pajamas on a lot of the time so you know i don't know how i'm gonna feel then but uh so i'm trying to try and you know put things together i did take my necklace i had on earlier off it was bothering me i don't know if y'all can tell i've got a down in here bump this down a little bit yeah Oops. So right here is a big, there's a big lump. Well, that's my port that they put my chemo in there. And it goes up, there's a tube that goes up into my neck, into an artery. And uh, let me put that back. <laughs> anyway, my necklace was just like rubbing on that tube and it was making it hurt. So that necklace is going away until I get rid of the, the port. So anyway. These poor children, I hope that the family on their mother's side are good people. I do too. Um, so far, what I've heard is that they are. I don't know. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust that. I don't know. You know, there was allegations that her brother had SA'd the children. But there's also reason to believe that that was all just made up. In fact, Wrangler said that he made up a bunch of lies to ensure that the mother would get custody so she wouldn't blow his brains out. So it sounds to me like that side of the family has suffered. And can you imagine if he's innocent of essaying those kids, can you imagine being accused of that? I mean, my God, I hope they're good people and I'll be praying for those kids. I just, I cannot imagine. They've lost a whole entire side of their family, and there's no telling what that side of their family told them about their mother and her side of the family. Because, I mean, don't kid yourself. You know they were trashing her. You know they were. If they were trashing her to everybody else, they were doing it to the kids too. And that that is absolute child abuse. Even if you have a problem with the other parent, you keep your mouth shut around those kids and... You know, I mean, if it's something that has to go to court or something, then obviously they're going to hear things. But that's done in ways that are protective of the kids. They would have their own lawyer that handled things. And it's just insane. I'm just, oh, I'm just sick over it. Just makes me sick that people like that exist. I'm going over to Rabbits to check out Miriam, too. Yes, I love Miriam, too. Beautiful tattoo. Thank you. It has a hummingbird right here. And there used to be one down here. <laughs> Sorry, my shirt keeps going down. There was one over here, but I've had so many surgeries that they have had to pull the skin together and pull the skin together. And, you know, the bird's gone. So I only have one bird now. I had it done in Maui by a good friend of mine, and it took eight and a half hours straight. And there's not a straight line on it. He did it with a some kind of a needle that is like a paintbrush that just is like wispy. So he didn't have a pattern to go by. He just sat down and started doing it. So it's one of a kind. I mean, there's people who have them like it, but there's nobody that's got one just like it. I live in jammies unless I have to leave the house. Mischief managed me too a lot of times, but I've really been making myself get up and try to get dressed. Now, I'm not saying I get dressed fancy. I've got on a pair of shorts and a t-shirt today. And uh, so we're, you know, 
not fancy, but I've been trying to get dressed. This is such a sickening act for kids. I know, Ma Mama's life. I know it makes me sick. I just, I, I couldn't even eat dinner last night. I couldn't do it. I kept watching and, oh, I was just sick. I couldn't even eat. And I was hungry, but I just couldn't do it. My son had full custody of my grandson, but never bad mouthed the mom of his son. That's how it's supposed to be. That is how it is supposed to be. I, um, you know, I had a divorce and my children were still growing and there was a lot of tension between me and my ex. And now they were older, they were teenagers. And so they saw firsthand a lot of stuff, but I never trashed their dad. I just wouldn't do it. And we're friends now and have been for 20 years. I mean, basically immediately after the divorce, we were, we were friends again and I'm friends with his wife and it, you know, it's wonderful. And I believe that that was possible because I didn't trash him to the kids. Cause if I had trashed him to the kids, you know, they say, that if you trash the parent, that the kids internalize that and they, you know, they, they know they're half of that parent. And so they think they're that kind of person too, if you trash them. Now there are cases where, you know, there are abuse and stuff and you've got to keep them away from that parent. I understand that completely, but you still don't have to trash them. And, um, that wasn't the case with mine. He was being a jerk, but he, <laughs> he wasn't a bad dad. He was just being a jerk. He was a jerk husband. <laughs> But uh, anyway, he's nice now and we get along great and everything. But yes, that's how it's supposed to be. You don't, you don't bad mouth them to the kids. That's just, that's just awful. But you also don't kill them. You don't kill the children's mother and an innocent woman that was doing her job and going to supervise the the exchange and the visitation. It just, it makes me sick. It's, and it only keeps getting worse. So anyway, I'm going to go. I smell my dinner cooking. I'm going to check on it. I've got some little chicken fingers wrapped up in a jalapeno with cheese and wrapped in bacon. <laughs> Fattening as can go, but it just sounded good. And so we're having that and some twice-baked potatoes. So there's more cheese. Apparently, I'm in a cheese mood. And uh, anyway, my husband ought to be home anytime. Yeah, that's not appropriate either. <laughs> Amen. Oh, man. I guess some people just don't understand that, right? Like, they just don't get it. It makes me so mad and... Adios, everyone. Have a great night. You have a great night, too. And I'm going to go ahead and go, and I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you. Thanks for checking in with me, and I'm really hoping that I can wait till tomorrow to do anything else. <laughs> I'm going to spend some time with my husband. How's that sound if he gets home? Oh, he'll be home pretty quick, and he'll be home quicker because we are officially out of the cattle business, y'all. We sent all of our cattle to the cell over the weekend in preparation for him retiring and us getting to travel. We're hoping to do some traveling this summer and we didn't want somebody else to have to take care of our cattle. So we're selling them and we still have our chickens, but those are easy. The girls love feeding the chickens and getting the eggs and they argue over who gets to keep the eggs. <laughs> so we usually get somewhere between eight and 10 a day. And uh, so they love that. Veda, my little granddaughter, little next to the littlest granddaughter, she says, well, now I can have an egg sandwich. <laughs> so anyway, I just, I'm going to hug my grandkids, y'all. I'm going to hug my grandkids because they don't have family that would kill either of their parents. <laughs> Who knew, right, that that I'm sorry. I'm just, mm. well, I'm going to go and I will see you guys tomorrow. Love you all. Bye.